the ratio of charge to mass for electrons. Our objective is to study the circular motion of electrons moving in a magnetic field. We will also calculate the charge to mass ratio of electrons because of this observed circular motion. The equipment is the E over M apparatus, which shows an electron tube uh, so, uh, in between Helmholtz coils, along with power supply beaters and wires. The procedure is to set a voltage for the electron tube so that the electrons accelerate from the base of the tube up through a small hole in a metal disk. Uh, you'll be able to observe the stream of electrons as sort of a blue line. Then we will adjust current in the Helmholtz coils to cause the electron beam to bend into a circular motion. And we will record the value of the current that causes the circle to bend into a particular radius. Uh, here on the metal disc, I'm highlighting the etched rings and the center hole. And again, the electrons accelerate up from the bottom of the tube, up through a hole that I've highlighted as sort of a blue line that's going to be what the electrons uh, will appear to be. Now, in darkness, uh, you can see the electron beam in the tube. And as I adjust the Helmholtz coil current, you can see me bending uh, the beam. Uh, when the beam strikes the etched ring, it actually makes a spot light up uh, that I'm sure I'm on that ring. As I adjust a little more, you see, ah, there, that's, uh, uh, the, the spot clearly is lit up, and so the radius of the circle is known, and I've written down the current. Now we'll look for uh, additional uh, rings that are etched. There's the next one in from the outside, and recording a current value, and there's one more that we'll get. There it is, there. So uh, we have for each radius, we have a current that caused that radius, and we'll come to the formulas uh, in a little while. Now, back to the beam uh, coming up straight. Uh, just to show you, if I reverse the current, uh, which was previously counterclockwise in the coils, to clockwise in the coils, uh, that will give me the magnetic field entering the picture. And you'll see as I cause current, I am making the beam deflect to the right. So in the case of the beam deflecting to the right and the magnetic field into the board, and the velocity of the electrons straight up, the right-hand rule would give me V cross B, or velocity crossed into the magnetic field, as a vector to the left. But because the electrons are negative, uh, the force is to the right. So here's the data table that we'll use. Uh, the, for each of the three rings that we uh, looked at, the, the radius of each ring is known and is recorded. Now, if uh, you don't have data of your own, uh, I've included in the table the currents uh, for each ring that caused the electron beam to bend into that particular radius. Also, for me, on my trial run, uh, I also have capital N, the number of turns in the Helmholtz coils, 133, average radius of my coils, 10 and a half centimeters, and the voltage delta V that I set that accelerated the electrons for me was 61 volts, but that will be uh, uh, different for you. Now, the calculations are explained more on our website along with the assignment. I'm just quickly showing the formula for the Helmholtz coil that's uh, partly empirical. Um, and then for the charge to mass calculations, there's our standard value based on values you could look up for the fundamental charge and the electron mass. And there are two uh, calculated E over M values. The first one will be based on the circular motion of the electrons and the uh, magnetic field coming from the Helmholtz coil formula above. For the second one, we'll actually take the Helmholtz coil formula and add to that the Earth's magnetic field 
that we'll take as five milliteslas, and we'll just assume that uh, that that field is in the same direction as the field through the coils, as a worst case scenario. So in the table, there is a percent error and a percent difference column. The percent error column relates to the charge to mass ratio one that did not include the Earth's magnetic field um, in, uh, as compared to the standard value. So we have the E over M1 minus the standard over the standard converted to a percent uh, in absolute value. Percent diff is uh, for the purpose of comparing the two calculated values, uh, one and two, uh, one without the Earth's magnetic field and two with the Earth's magnetic field. So we have the difference of the two E over M calculations divided by the average of those values, again, converted to a percent and in absolute values. Refer to the class website for more information and the actual assignment.